So we're here at the ID Tech Hack show, and uh, who are you? I'm Gary Brown, I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Movidius. And you just won the award right here, Best IoT Technology Development here at the ID Tech Hack show. Yes, so, it's an uh, honor, thank you. But you have pretty awesome technology, right? I think so, of course. Um, so it's been around, uh, is it from Ireland or where does it come from? The company from? was founded in Dublin, Ireland. And so... Uh, Over 11 years ago. 11 years ago? Mm -hmm. But things have been uh, speeding up in the last few years, right? Yes, yes. With the uh, advent of our, of our latest microprocessor, which is called a Vision Processing Unit, or VPU, called the Myriad 2, <laughs> we found that there's just an explosion in interest in various kinds of IoT devices. IoT devices. So Vision VPU, did you invent Vision that? Processing Unit. There's a lot of people talking about uh, vision computing now and stuff. This is a big, big yes. deal, right? Well, we believe that in order to get the best power efficiency and in order to get the most intelligence, you have to put it at the network edge, right near where image sensors are. For example, in surveillance cameras, in order to get intelligence analytics kind of algorithms to run, you want to have it, you don't have the latency, or you don't have the power, you want to save on power and latency to have that much intelligence at the network edge, as well as in drones, as well as in VR headsets. There's a lot of sensing going on in this, these kinds of devices. So they need a lot of intelligence at very low power and very miniature electronics. But has this goal been the, the goal since the 11 years? Has it always been this goal? The company pivoted a couple of times, but primarily it's been video post-processing and video processing. And when the company started focusing after several years on vision processing and vision sensing, intelligent vision sensing, that's when we really struck a chord and resonated with the industry. But uh, is that because... Uh, technology is getting and uh, the nanometers and all that stuff when you make CPUs is getting powerful enough to make this vision possible? Well, that's a good question. Is it because the technology, the process technology and the electronics technology is getting better? That's part of the answer. It can get lower and lower power. But it's also due to innovative new architectures that you can implement at a micro, at a very, very small scale. So it's our innovative way of we're developing the architecture for very, very high performance in a programmable processor for vision and also getting the smaller scale of improvements in technology down from 28 nanometer to 16 nanometer and beyond. So how does it compare with a GPU or an ARM processor? Is there any That's ARM a good processor question. Existing processors that? tend to be very wide in their scope of the applications. You've, you've talked about CPUs and GPUs, which um, have to do uh, either display processing or very generalized processing. We've decided to focus specifically on imaging and vision, and we can do that in very, very low power, but we don't run Android, we don't run general apps on our processor. So you focus just on one thing? Thing. Yes. But that thing sounds pretty complicated still. It's like you're analyzing That's true. video. That's true. Analyzing and making sense out of But it. But with very programmable proprietary DSP cores that we have on our chip and a very proprietary architecture, which includes very efficient data movement around from uh, memory to those cores and a bunch of other accelerators, we're able to do what needs to be done in today's IoT devices very efficiently at low power, at very low cost. And can the Movidius just be one part of the SOC? Or is I it think a separate, what you're asking a separate is... separate chip on the PCB? Is it, not, is it, is it some kind of an IP block or is it a chip? It's a chip. It's We're a in chip. the chip business. You're yes. making a chip that goes in a PCB That's and right. then there could be another microcontroller. That's right, and then it goes into the else. drone to, for example, powering an autonomous drone, being able to detect or track people or be able to detect barriers and move around them. So that's what we're doing, as was announced with the uh, uh, DJI and uh, other... So I've been watching these videos about the Phantom 4, and it's so fascinating and awesome. Yes, our first major <laughs> drone announcement was the Phantom 4. And uh, DJI is a pretty big uh, success story from mm -hmm. China. They're, they're a great customer of ours. We really like what they're doing. And so uh, how do you sit down and do this kind of product? Is like a huge work from their side or from yours? You, you make it and then they well, just like sit back and like, whoa, <laughs> you just made it for us? No, we work? support our customers on integrating the algorithms uh, that they need. Um, it does in the Phantom 4, our chip is doing everything from depth sensing to analysis and tracking objects, tracking people. So um, we make it happen. That's amazing. It's like following. You can follow. You can avoid obstacles. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do stuff with uh, 
you're landing in the right place, you don't land on the tree or something. I don't know. But I guess like you could update. It has that. all kinds of magic in terms of the autonomous flight, but it's the flight controller that we support in the product. We're very excited about it, and you're going to hear more uh, from what DJI and other companies are doing very soon. That's just going to be, I mean, this, this mind blowing kind of field that you're in, right? Yes. It's, uh, it's like, uh, it's going to be pretty fun. How, how, how do the, the yeah. engineers well, make this happen? The reason the why it's so mind blowing is more and more of the technology is going to deep learning and neural networks. And so put, put in deep learning so you can classify objects, so you can have a little bit more intelligence into what exactly the drone is flying around or what exactly you're looking at through the VR headset. And then it'll blow your mind even more to see how you can do intelligent object tracking. Or think about intelligent vacuum cleaners, what they'll do with uh, objects uh, that they have to maneuver around in cleaning your room. So deep learning, I think, is going to make its way into a lot of the devices that we see in consumer electronics. But there's also, uh, like, for example, security cameras. If, if you upload for 24 hours a 4K video, it's going to fill up a hard drive. You need to be smart about what you record, right? That's right. That's so why they need very that? smart analytics to be able to record only what's uh, necessary uh, based on where people are going or what people are there or recognizing people. And so we see a lot of activity, especially in East Asia, in terms of um, surveillance technology becoming more intelligent. So, so this is very exciting. I'm hoping Project Tango is the future of a smartphone, you know? And uh, well, There's I think exciting was, things happening in smartphones, but also in many, many other devices outside of the smartphone. Were you not announced as part of the Project Tango? Yes, we yeah. were announced as part of Project Tango. So how do you enable that? Well, Project Tango is a reference design from Google. Um, Google, as you know, is a very, very special partner of ours because um, what they do in the industry has a ripple effect and causes other manufacturers to want to take on uh, the kind of ideas that they're putting out into the world. So one of them is more intelligent vision in mobile phones. So we'll see more and more of that in mobile devices as well as other kinds of uh, IoT devices. And it's kind of like indoor positioning suddenly. Exactly. Positioning, positional tracking, at. that's something you have to do well, not only in mobile phones, in VR and AR headsets and other kinds of devices coming our way. And sorting through... I think through I've run out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorting through all the data that goes to the cap through the camera. You have to sort through and decide what you send over to camera the Camera data comes in, you do some analysis and, uh, and decide what you're looking at or how it needs to be tracked or um, you know, depth sensing, 3D sensing. All kinds of different algorithms can run on a programmable chip like ours. And you were acquired by Intel. So what's going to happen now? It was announced that we were now uh, being acquired by Intel, That's and so from now we'll be uh, a part of the Intel family. And they have and, a lot uh, of resources to help you make even crazier visions happen, right? The sky's the limit. Exciting. Right. Thank you very much.